listening to Joygasm, a video game and movie podcast. I'm Russ, Xbox Live Toaster 360. That's right, he is Steve, Xbox Live Steve Bitch. And we're inside Xbox in episode 172 today, May 8th, 2020. We're going to be catching up with each other really quick before diving right into our topic of the day, which is our inside Xbox impressions and more specifically our inside xbox third party game impressions which you can fast forward to if you look at the detail stamps located down below but other than that i thought it would be fun to be able to kick off this episode steve by talking about how we are now officially back on itunes (laughs) not like they might not even know because I mean, since we've been off, we haven't been able to tell anybody anything. So, um, you know, hopefully <laughs> glad you're here. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, yeah. Uh, hopefully they get a uh, notification or um, hopefully they've been listening to YouTube or uh, looking at Facebook or something. Maybe the website. I don't know. You, you never know. You never know. I mean, we've been pretty poor at uh, keeping people abreast of our <laughs> iTunes woes. And so there's really no excuse at all. We hang uh, our heads in shame. shame. So, yeah. Well, I have some to say. So per our last episode, we should have been on L video. And uh, we did our diligence we found cameras. Some might even say we did our due diligence. <laughs> right. And so I go order said cameras and they're out of stock. No time to get, you know, no, no end date. No, like, okay, it's back ordered until X date. Just nothing. So I said, okay, well, I will sign up to be notified when they arrive. But Russ pick another camera and you said here how about this one it's 30 bucks more it's whatever it's a better camera let's get that one and i said great and i go to dell and i say dell send me these cameras and dell says yeah no problem we got them in stock when we want them i can get you on the tuesday how's tuesday i said tuesday works great what's it gonna cost they said shipping 30 bucks to get it on tuesday otherwise you get it friday and i thought you know what russ ain't gonna be happy if it's gonna (laughs) I'm pushing the, the limit there. Get it on Friday. Might as well get it Tuesday. We can kind of mess around a little bit, you know, make sure everything works like it should. Uh huh. So uh, Tuesday came and went, no camera. Wednesday came and went, no camera. By Thursday, not so happy. So I look around on my uh, my order, and it turns out that oh yeah, we forgot to tell you. you know how on our website we said that they were in stock. They're not in stock. Matter of fact, that one's on back order too. (gasps) Till July the 7th. So you're not going to get your order expedited. Just let you know. And so I wrote him a nice little letter. I said, how about you quote unquote expedite me a refund then because I want to wait till July to get a camera. Oh, and uh, then someone snarky, yeah, snarky, yeah, I know. And then someone says, "Oh no, we'll, we'll we'll get you the camera, and and then by the time it ships to you, we'll refund you the 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 expedited shipping cost." I went, "No, maybe you didn't read my email right. I'm canceling my order. Refund me my money. Can I make it any more clear?" So that's why we're not on video this week. That's right. Oh, it, you try. know, it, it's one of those things where we attempt. <clears throat> we give it our Man. old heave ho. Mm. And, you know, it's really funny to actually, when I think about the situation with COVID-19 and everything else, how probably everyone and their grandmother has gone out and bought themselves an upgraded webcam for all the work from home type of uh, setups, as well as folks who want to just chat because humans are social creatures, Steve. They need to have some sort of social engagement. I know. Right. I know how it feels. I know right. what it's like. Do you? And so it makes uh, actually, um, you know, total sense to, to hear about uh, how the, the webcams that you ordered wouldn't be available until July because like the food... People are hoarding them, Steve. It's a, <laughs> it's a pretty uh, dire condition of the, the human spirit. <clears throat> Jeez. 
But we're going to see what we can do, though. I mean, I think that there are probably some other places we can take a look. There might be some stores that, I don't, you know, I don't even know if they're open or not. They're, they're, everything is in such a constant state of flux and fluidity. That it's very difficult well, to, be to know for sure, like, which stores are actually back to being open and which ones are not and everything else. But we're going we're gonna to find out. We're going we'll to see what we something. can do. Do some like Craigslist back alley deal. Like, hey, you got my, you got my camera. You got my stuff. Yeah, man, I got it. You can, you bring the money. Yeah, I got your money. Now you got a laptop. So I'm going to test this thing. I make sure it works before I give you the money. <laughs> don't try no funny no. business. No, no, no. I don't want the money. <laughs> I want some meat. Yeah. I want some toilet paper. Yeah. <laughs> you got the good stuff. I don't want any of that generic toilet paper neither. I want the Charmin. <laughs> Give I me the, the Charmin. I want the double ply. I want the quilted stuff. Give me the wet wipes. <laughs> the ones that are strong yet gentle. I like that. My anus thanks you for it. Oh, man. So... I guess Anyhow. it's going to be kind of a, a you know, wait and see kind of a, a approach. And I think it's funny that... <laughs> Despite our pledge to try and get on the video, no matter what, using a uh, webcam as opposed to our initial setup, we have been thwarted yet again, Steve. It is yeah. going to be quite the battle. But you know what, Steve? Yes, right. That just means the victory, the eventual victory, is going to taste that much sweeter. <laughs> I hear that. So, anyway, glad that we got through that. I say let us forego the what's new with us thing because there's actually quite a bit to talk about with our topic of the day. So let's just segue right into this. Let's just jump in the, uh, let's get on our two wheeled stand up machines and lean forward. Exactly. Lean, but not too much. <laughs> Maybe I'll spin around and I'll lean backwards as you're <laughs> leaning forwards. All right. Oh, man. All right. <laughs> anyway, Microsoft had a, oh, I guess it's about, about an hour you know, long little, presentation, yeah, right? A little event, more like an event, Russ. I don't know about, a, yeah, I guess a presentation, you know, it wasn't like, I mean, a presentation, they all kind of Skyped from home. Um, yes. They, or they streamed from, from the main office, but they're, you know, everybody who was presenting was Skyping in a sense, but yes, go ahead. Yeah, which I must say, one of the things that I actually like about how they were forced into this type of presentation style is that I got to skip past all of the people who are like talking from their homes. I like I, I found myself really not caring at all what they had to say. Right. And so it worked out great because I just fast forward through all that nonsense and go right to the games to see what all they have to offer. So when it comes to this particular presentation, this was focusing on some of the third party games that are slated to come out for Xbox. And I imagine they'll probably come out on the PS5 as well. I'm not sure about all the, well, like what the exclusive deals, if there are any for these games or not, but it was interesting because I believe there were 13 titles that they showed and there was a variety of them. But before we actually go into talking about um, each game, I do want to get your opinion, Steve. I want to find out what, what was your, your high level overall impression of what they showed? Well, you know, I, I think I had to, t my excitement took a step back in a way. Uh, now I don't, I, I like third party titles. I like triple A titles, you know, but from what I saw, uh, it, it seemed like it was a, a, a notch up from current Xbox one stuff, but it wasn't like knock you out of your seat and slap you in the face and then give you a, a kiss, mm. like excitement. You know what I mean? Like everything looked fine. It just didn't blow you out of the water. Everything looked, you know, everything was good. It just didn't set you on fire. You know what I'm saying, I Russ? I mean, are you, I do. I mean, are you, are you, uh, Never mind. I was going to say, are you uh, lapping up what I'm spitting at you? But that that sounded just that. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I can't say, Steve, uh, it, there, there wasn't any kind of uh, titillating feeling. How about that? Right. Um, and I mean, I, I've really been I've tried not to watch all the the hype and everything. And because I'm, I'm way excited as it is. I keep thinking about it. I can't wait to get the system and I keep talking about it. 
but and and there was good games. I mean, I'm not going to say it was a it was a poorly executed event and like they just they they shot themselves in the foot. I'm just saying like, hey, Phil Spencer, buddy boy, you had a lot of time to prepare for this, and everyone's really waiting on edge here, and you've been touting the system, and um, you call it gameplay, and then you show us just kind of no gameplay with just, you know kind of average not yeah basically kind of average titles there was some stuff that looked pretty darn good i'm gonna i am gonna say that but by and large uh, i i wasn't about to write home about it i wasn't about to really tweet about it i didn't want to complain too much because i wanted to complain to you personally <laughs> um <laughs> so but yeah, I mean, there, there there was some some stuff that was encouraging. I mean, I, I I'll go out to say I liked you know the chorus looked good. It looked right up my alley. It looked like a game I've been waiting for. It looked like that's whoa, what. Whoa, whoa, uh, whoa. Let's, not, let's let's not jump the hey, the hey, shark hey, here. Hey, 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 well, hey, let's hey, keep hey, things hey, high hey, level, hey, then we'll hey, go hey, down hey, hey, title hey, hey. by title. Okay. So yeah, we, I think we got the the gist of uh, how you felt about that, Steve. Uh, when it comes to <laughs> my side of things, over I was here, gonna say yeah. Uh, do you agree or not? Because we, 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 we can just skip right past what you're saying. We just want to agree. With you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got to say, Steve, that um, one of the things I think is really interesting about this year in particular is the fact that Phil Spencer and company have made it a priority to be as transparent and open as possible with a treasure trove of different types of announcements and that sort of thing. It's, it's very much a different, like kind of, I don't know, playbook style. And if you want to say, cause like typically when it comes to next gen reveals, they kind of wait until E3 and then they, they kind of spill the beans on everything. But this time around, they have been doling it out where they kind of show off the, the new system and they show off the controller and they have Phil Spencer who makes himself readily available to chat with like places like IGN and other gaming publishing journalistic uh, uh, outposts. And it's all well and good, but I, I have discovered that there is a bit of a weak point, almost a, a challenge for them. And that is how do you maintain your level of hype all the way to like the official launch press conference itself. And I think that they've done a pretty good job of this, but I got to say when it comes to things like this, like for the third party game impressions. So, you know, the, their, their schedule, the way they have this thing set up is, is that it's May, right? It's, it's not June. June is typically the time when E3 happens and that's when all the big announcements gets made. What I find to be pretty interesting here is that they decided to actually showcase several third-party titles in the month of May. And then their schedule is, is that they're going to actually show their first-party titles for Xbox Series X in June followed by yet another conference that's going to happen or not conference, but like, you know, presentation that's going to happen in July. And I don't remember exactly what's going to be with that. It's probably going to be a bit more of like the third party oriented stuff. Um, but it's interesting how, you know, once again, they are continuing this process of doling the information out month by month. What's, what I find to be risky though is with this cropping of titles, to your point, Steve, there really wasn't a, a, a particular title that screamed next generation to me. And I walked away actually kind of underwhelmed. I, I wasn't necessarily disappointed because there were certain titles that I am curious to play. But having said that, I think that when you have kind of like your first look at what kind of games are coming out for your next gen system, you got to make sure that those things are going to leave a mark. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Leave a mark, a little, a little magic marker, maybe even a scar, but a good scar, a little, little Sharpie mark, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's what maybe I'm a little saying. little shart in your underwear. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little racing stripe. <laughs> so having said all that, it's not as though I, I feel as though the, the Xbox series X is going to be a failure far from it. I think I'm going to be holding my opinion um, collectively until June. And, and when we see the first party efforts at that point, I will make kind of more of a conclusion 
based on uh, what I see. But I, but I do think that, that Microsoft has heaped on a bit of pressure onto itself as a result of the way that, that this particular third party uh, showing took place. So without further ado, Steve, I say we go down title by title. I have them listed out here and I want to hear your thoughts and I want to hear my own thoughts. (laughs) (laughs) So, Starting off here, I, so I, I just plopped Assassin's Creed Valhalla as the first one to talk mm. about, simply because they were teasing their Game their play, title right. before this whole thing took place. Yeah. So what did you think? Well, it just looked like more of the same stuff that they had dropped before the event. I mean, it was all CG and maybe it was in-game graphics, but <clears throat> the thing is, is that what we've seen from Ubisoft before is that they'll either run the game on a high-powered PC or uh, they'll run the game this way or that way or they'll just say like, hey, this is what uh, you know maybe the in-game graphics may look like, but they'll run a cinema uh, or like some sort of cut scene, some, <clears throat> you know, whatever, and you don't actually see somebody with a controller playing the game. You're like, okay, this is what the actual gameplay looks like. And so it wasn't just Microsoft that said, you know, this is going to be gameplay it was it was Ubisoft that said that we're going to show gameplay footage. And so I didn't see any gameplay footage. I mean, I, you know, I'm, you're not playing Assassin's Creed with the camera view, like straight on the guy or from the chin up, right? You're playing it from like behind the character and you know, you're, you're, you're fighting, you're jumping, you're going to high peaks, you're parkouring, you know, this, that, and the other. And you got a life meter, you got a weapon on you, you know, you're interacting with different people. Like I've played a fair share. I haven't played all of them, but I've played my fair share of Assassin's Creed. And there's a lot of similarities between them. I mean, the story changes, but there's a lot of similarities and there wasn't a gameplay. There wasn't a HUD. There wasn't anybody with a controller. It was just like, okay, this part happens in the game. Um, but by and large, we didn't really see any, uh, anybody play the game specifically. So I felt like it, they, they kind of were dangling the carrot in front of me and then like pulled it away really quick because we, they dropped the trailer for Valhalla early on. And so then this event was supposed to be, okay, we saw We showed you a, a teaser trailer. Now this is going to be the gameplay. And we all went, okay, ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Here, here we go. Gameplay. And then they go, ah, just kidding. Here's more teaser trailer stuff. So I thought, eh, well, this is not really exciting because I've already seen it, basically. Um, I want to see the actual meat. So I'm going to jump in here and say that I totally agree with what you're talking about because the first trailer that they showed prior to this presentation was totally pre-rendered cinematic. And I mean, I admit, I like watching those um, because I'm a sucker for cinematics. But at the same time, I also hold my breath because I want to see what the actual gameplay looks like. And Ubisoft is so guilty of this. And I'm really sick and tired of how they go about marketing their games when it comes to these different E3 press conferences and presentations. But yeah, like when when it came to the inside Xbox presentation, most of the trailer was still pre-rendered cinematics. Like you got brief and I mean, super brief glimpses of the actual in-game models and gameplay, despite it being, you know, touted as like, oh, game engine reveal or whatever that little tiny text it said. But you could tell, like, like if you watch that video and you pause it at certain times, they have like like these super short little clips of like what like your main character in-game looks like. And there is a pretty noticeable departure from everything else that they have glossed into uh, for, for the trailer itself. So I have no doubt that the game itself will probably look pretty decent. Just if, if Assassin's Creed origins is anything to base it off of, I'm sure it's not going to be an ugly game by, by any stretch, but at the same time, I'm not so sure that we're going to see some sort of like big jump when it comes to next gen. What say you, Steve? Yeah, it almost makes you wonder if they're hiding something. Like this is what they, this is what they really are proud of, but the game actually isn't going to look that great from maybe what the Xbox One X could already do. Yeah, that, that's almost the feeling 
that I get. But, you know, another feeling that I have is that maybe I'm speaking at a, at a place here, but I just feel like the community is getting tired of all these pre-rendered trailers. I think that as gamers, we want to see the game. And if we go to see a movie, then we want to see a movie trailer. So when you start flipping around, okay, we're going to show you a trailer to your game, but we're not actually going to show you the game, but we're going to tell you what's going to be the game. I think that's that's frustrating. And I think that's happening way, just, you know, way too much. We're gamers. We want to see the game. Show us the game, especially if you're going to tease us and bring out news stories ahead of time that you're going to see the actual game. The, so. the perfect recipe for this type of situation is if you're going to show some pre-rendered cinematics, you have to balance it out with bona fide in-game gameplay because right. at that point people realize, wow, like this, this has a big budget behind it. They're hiring, um, you know, proper cinematic studios to be able to, uh, generate all of the the fancy stuff, and then also too, they they clearly believe in their game, and it's come. It's not vaporware; it actually works and stuff. And here you go. Here here's like a a nice you know two to five minute long game demo. So we'll see. I, I'm I'm still interested in the title just because I think the Viking angle is pretty interesting, and and I I never got around to playing Assassin's Creed Origins just because I was playing Red Dead Redemption Two first, and then if you recall. I tried getting into Assassin's Creed and it just didn't do it for me. But and I think that also is, is worth mentioning that the same thing might occur when I play this new one. If, if I get into Assassin's Creed Valhalla, I may or may not, it just depends, but I may end up just putting it down and not being interested, but simply because it hasn't evolved to the point that Red Dead Redemption 2 has in terms of like that new benchmark of quality. But anyway... Enough of that title. Let's go on down the list because we got a lot to go through here. Bright Memory Infinite. Yes. So this one was it has apparently has been developed entirely by one man, which I think is extremely impressive. It's a first person shooter action game kind of thing. Um, This was the the title that Microsoft actually led off with, which I think was wise because it definitely is visually impressive. Like you're watching, you're like, Oh, okay. Okay. I was doing some research on it and apparently it has been available for PC, but in like, like different installments, but this version, I guess, combines all the installments together, I guess, because it was developed by one person. Like it was kind of an episodic thing or something like that. But anyway, I figured I would just kind of throw that out there. This is not some sort of brand new IP uh, type of game. However, having said that though, uh, what'd you think of it? No, that game looks awesome. Um, I don't know if it's, if it's going to be something I'm going to enjoy playing or just watching. Um, but it was kind of funny. I mean, you know, you're swimming and you get up and you, and you got guns and they got like, you know, martial arts and you got swords and you got, and you got like night dudes or a block in your bullets. So then you have to switch to your sword. <laughs> Like, let's think of like everything, you know, kind of combat cool and throw it in the game. You got a grappling hook. You got you know, throw yourself around the, around the, whatever little map you're on. <laughs> well, I mean, it looked awesome. They got wind blowing with debris and, and they have all like, the, you know, the, these wet effects, like on the wood, the wood looks soaked wet and, and still look like wood though. I mean, there was a lot of, of stuff to appreciate, especially with only one dude like making the game. I mean, that's quite the vision. Um, but no, I, that, that, so they were smart leading off with that game because that made everybody go, wow, that looks awesome. I want to play that. Look how crisp all the lines are and the effects and this, I mean, if, if this is like the, the a launch game, oh my goodness, what else do we have to offer? <laughs> so I, but then the rest of the stuff happened and, and it was kind of a trail off, but that game alone looked pretty freaking awesome. Yeah, it did. That was one I was pretty impressed by. I also really enjoyed the suspiciously looking DeLorean type car that came in and you were driving that through some sort of like right. ancient feudal Japan. And <laughs> it, it, it was kind of like, let, let's just, <laughs> let's just dump like every type of like cool idea we can think of <laughs> exactly. into a game and let's just let it loose. Let's just see what happens. Man, throw a little twisted metal in there. Like what is going on? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't know whether to hate it or love it. I don't know. This oh, is crazy. Man. But um but okay. So we're we're in agreement on that. The next title is Call of the Sea. This seems to be kind of more of a story-driven adventure game. Uh it could be fun. 
It reminds me definitely of Sea of Thieves. What do right. you think? Yeah, it, yeah, it definitely remind me of, of Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves look a little bit better in some ways, and this look better in other ways. You know, a lot more trees and and, and greenery and rocks and, and you know just environmental stuff. Um, more movement with the water. Um, I'm interested to see where it goes. I, I like the name of the game for sure because I definitely feel it ever since I've moved from California. I feel the call of the sea, uh, the, the ocean, the salt, the sea salt, Russ. So I'm I'm definitely down. I wasn't too impressed to how it looked to me. Again, it looked like it was a notch up from you know other stuff that we've played like Sea of Thieves, but it wasn't uh, making me regrow any hair, Russ, or lose any more. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Sadly, I do, Steve. <laughs> Sadly, I do. Yeah, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see how much that game costs. I, I may not pick that game up until it goes on sale or something. It definitely <laughs> wasn't one that I was like, oh, I can't wait to play that one. I may not get it until it reaches the discount bin. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along. Okay, so this next title is one that I was excited about. It's called Chorus. Ah, yeah. This is one of my faves I from know. the lineup. Uh, all I got to say is finally we have ourselves what appears to be a very cool looking spaceship shooter. Yeah, no, that I am so down for that one. I mean, I, I don't really know what's going on with the, with the main character and, and like the, um, the villain, but I mean, it, it seems like she can kind of communicate with that spaceship in a way like that. That spaceship yeah. is an extension of her. And I think it's an awesome idea. And it looked like, what I always wanted Everspace to be. Cause I remember we saw the, the preview to Everspace. I thought, yeah, that looks really good. I, 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 I want to pick that up. And I finally did. And I'm like, this game sucks. So I uh, had to delete that one off my, my hard drive. But um, this game makes me want to go. If money was no object and buy myself a projector and, <laughs> and, and a big screen, you know, and, and play that game. Oh, the um, graphics look really cool. Yeah. looks like it'd be awesome to play on like an, an IMAX sort of thing. I mean, though, you know, but just a huge screen altogether. But yeah, I'm totally down. Yeah, I, I really like the hero. I like the look of her. I think she, she's got presence on screen. I'm curious to know if the game is just a predominant um, space shooter or if if there are parts where you're actually out of your spaceship and you are, you know, I don't know if it's first person or third person or what the deal is. They kind of left that unsaid or, you know, right. kind of ambivalent, well, ambivalent a- a- ambiguous How about that. That'll work. But anyway, um, yeah, I definitely am excited for that game. I, th- I think it's going to be really cool. I think that, um, it definitely lends itself to feeling more like uh, a next gen title. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm pleased with that one. Dirt five. This was a bit underwhelming to me. Um, this, the, the dirt series, has been hit or miss for me personally, because I, there are certain dirt numbers throughout the, the years that I really like a lot, but then there've been others where I play it and I'm just like, what did they do? Like they, they've completely changed the feeling of how the cars move and turn and drift and everything else. And so this one I, I thought was okay. I, I think I'm going to be, much more impressed with the inevitable Forza game that they'll probably show next month. Well, yeah. And that's basically what it almost looked like to me, which is how Forza four looked, but in a dirt game. And so to me, that wasn't anything new. It wasn't anything over the top. It looked like if they took the Forza four engine or the Forza horizon four engine, I should say, and, threw it to the dirt guys and said, okay, make a game. Cause it, it really didn't look anything better than what we already have with Forza. So I'm not, a, you know, I haven't got into the, the dirt series. I played it a couple of times at your place. I think it was dirt three, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Dirt. See dirt three was a good one. And yeah. And that one definitely was fun, but this, that game didn't, didn't do anything for me. I think I'd, I definitely pass or at least, uh, see how the reviews are before I, I spend money on it. But um, so far, I, I would definitely give it a pass. Right. The next title is Madden NFL 21. All I got to say is what a waste of a trailer. Yeah, that was <laughs> stupid. I, I was hoping that they were actually going to have Madden's voice from the previous games because uh, they showed Madden pop out. I'm like, man, that was a long time ago. But yes, that's great. And then 
like they use all this time to get all over to the, the the Madden that's coming out. And then that happened and it was fine, I guess. But um, yeah, that, that was a, that was a waste. I think they could have made it a lot better I, uh, of a trailer. I think they could have, uh, you know, if they were to go down memory lane, I think they could have stuffed like better, better, um, you know, memorable uh, scene, you know, stuff in there with, with Madden himself. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, you call it Madden for a reason. Why not throw him in there more? So I don't know. Yeah, I, w- I was, that's definitely not going to make me, you know, pick up Madden. Well, and the thing is, is like, I see what they're going for with, you know, starting out with the basic graphics because they want to wow you with like the next gen sure. graphics, Sure. but they, they took too long. Like we saw five seconds of actual next gen gameplay, you know, like, I don't know. I just wish that there was another football competitor because ever since they got the exclusive rights to the NFL, I, I really feel as though they haven't progressed as far as they could had they, if they actually had someone who was nipping at their heels, making another football title. Like that's what I loved about um, Sega's 2k line was that their, their football game gave EAs a run for its money every year. And it was great to be able right. to see how the two of them really were pushing hard to get the customers to buy their title. So I mean, I know the Madden fans out there, they're, they're totally going to buy it. They always do. They're very loyal fans. They're going to buy the, the, the same game uh, every year that it comes out. And I'm sure we're going to see more probably in July or something like that. But I just thought to myself, when I was watching the trailer, I'm like, this is such a waste of my time. Like, I've seen and played all these games before. That's, that's not why I'm sitting here. But then again, maybe I'm not the core market. I don't know. Right. Scarlet nexus this one was a bit interesting in my opinion i feel as though um you know it, it was that that psychokinetic third person action game by uh, oh, right. bandai yeah. namco i i gotta say i think that this one is also another one of my favorites from the lineup what did you think yeah it was interesting i don't really know what's happening it seems like you're this person who can either see into two different, not necessarily worlds, but uh, like like parallel universes in a way, like where if you made certain choices, this would happen or this happened in the past, but now because you made a different choice, now it's this way, but you can look back and forth. Um, and look real, real psychological. Um, I think this was the game where they had the, the guy who made music for Silent Hill 2. So is that the one or was it a, was that a different one? No, I you're thinking that, that, no, that that's a different game. Is that a different game? Yeah, that, that I know the game that we're going to get to that uh, in a bit. Actually, it's, I think it's the next game that we're going to talk about, but this one in particular, this one is the one that um, has kind of that, that 2d cell animation kind of look and has the, the anime style. And I don't even know what the bad guys look like, but Oh you, wait, you're talking oh the Namco game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're, you're like yeah. a normal guy with a sword. Right, and you're right, 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 right. Um, I, 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 for one, really like the art style a lot. And it's Namco. I mean, Namco does a pretty good job with these types of, of games. It looked like Jet Set Radio. A little bit. Kind a of. A little bit. With but not. But, <laughs> but it wasn't to that extent in terms of the graphics engine. Like, they, they definitely had their own kind of style to it. Do you think right. you're going to pick that one up? Mm, no. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll watch it at your house. <laughs> oh, perfect. So the next uh, title was Scorn. And so the first thing I want to talk about with about Scorn is, and th- this applies to about three or four titles. One of the trends that I noticed this particular cycle with Microsoft in particular is a lot of the games that they're showing off are pretty dark. Yeah, that's true. Even when like when we got the tease of Hellblade 2, where they had that really cool thing that showed off, apparently it was they were saying that was game graphics, game engine graphics. Um, but watching that particular trailer, I recall how just dark it was and how she was, you know, chanting something that was pretty paganistic and uh, it was really intense. And like I said, dark is the best word that comes to mind. And I thought, huh, okay, well, that's interesting. I'm certainly curious to check out that game when it comes out. But then when we had the inside Xbox showing, there were like three or four titles. There was like Scorn, 
Uh, I think there was the medium uh, vampire, the masquerade bloodlines too. I think that was, th- those were the main ones, but like there's this, this kind of continuous trend of, of just this super like dark evil kind of thing. And I'm like, I don't know if there's a lot of like angsty emo game developers out there or what the deal <laughs> is here, but um, yeah, it's definitely interesting. But having said that, that's neither here nor there. When it comes to scorn, what do you think of it? Yeah, that's that one's uh, uh, basically here. Let me put it this way. Cause there's going to be a developing thing here, Rosa. The games that I was most interested in, We've, we've already talked about them. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, everything else that's there is either, hmm, let me just think about that for a squirrel, you know, <laughs> uh, or, or it's, it's just not my type of game or, it, I mean, it just didn't wow me or um, I'd have to wait till uh, what the jury decides first before I make a decision. Cause although, I mean, a lot of the stuff to me really was passable because I really, I didn't see what the games were. I mean, yeah, they were really dark. Um, and I, I, I kind of ex- understood some parts of the story, but a lot of the games after the, the stuff that, uh, I already liked, I, I, I really didn't care for. So with Scorn, to me, the first thing that I noticed right away was that the art direction is a total Aliens ripoff. Um, Geiger is the, uh, the the concept artist for the Aliens movies. He's the one who actually developed and designed the aesthetic that we've all come to recognize as the Aliens movies. And so I suppose like if you're an Aliens fan, then maybe you'd get a little excited about it. But the thing is, is that the game itself is not going to have the aliens in it. It's a completely different enemy type altogether. So I thought that that was kind of odd, but yeah, it it just doesn't look like my type of game. It, It looks like some kind of survival horror thing and, Maybe resident evil is kind of more my jam when it comes to survival <laughs> horror, but something like that I was looking at, I was like, yeah, I, I know that there is a, a group of folks out there who would probably dig this style of game. I'm just not one of them. Right. So it's not, well, it's not to say that the game is bad. It's just to me, it, I just, it didn't interest yeah. me. Well, there's nothing really that you could really tell that was made sense. I mean, you saw all these kind of statues that were kind of real and not real. And you saw some like figure that was dead, but it was pregnant and something was still alive. And, and then something was being resurrected. It seemed like, and you're like, is this in a different, is this on earth? Is this in space? Is this on a ship? Like it was so distant that it just didn't make sense to me of what's happening. And why should I be interested? Right. Yeah. Moving right along, Second Extinction. This was the Dino FPS. This that, is the uh, Two Rock Next Gen. Two Rock yeah, Dinosaur Hunter. I totally thought the same thing. I'm like, oh, so this is what Two Rock looks like on Next Gen. Having said that, though, I think it might be fun. All things considered, it's a first person shooter. You're shooting dinosaurs. I think that um, there's also probably a, a co op option in there. I think it said, you know, you control your squad. So I don't know if it's just you telling two or three other people what to do or if they have some sort of online component. I think in this type of game, it would be smart of them to actually have like a online four player co op. And if so, then you and I can uh, romp around and take out Velociraptor, Steve. There we go. Although I don't want to hurt a stegosaurus because I like the stegosaurus. Yeah, I do too. Well, no, no I'm the one who <laughs> likes stegosaurus. Your favorite was always the triceratops. That's true too. I like the triceratops. Yes, There's something did. about having three horns that interests me. I don't know. <laughs> There's <clears throat> something about having your face as a battering ram that I like. <laughs> <laughs> Another title that they showed off and um, is called The Ascent. And this actually was another one of my favorites from the lineup. That, that, this is the isometric action game. Mm. It kind of reminded me of Blade Runner a little bit in terms of the art style. Mm-hmm. It also kind of reminded me of a classic game that you and I played for the Xbox 360, Steve, What's called that, Hunter Russ? the Reckoning. 
Remember that game? No. How do you not remember Hunter the Reckoning? They even made a sequel that we played as well. It was that... It was that top-down isometric game where yeah, you, I figured that much, Russ. Well, if you st- <laughs> stop interrupting me. I'm trying to jog your old noodle there. <laughs> <clears throat> it was that that whole like um, undead supernatural four-player co-op game that you could play, and like there was like a priest you could play, and there was like I don't know some burly dude and people uh, yeah. like a character with crossbows and like you could go around and pick up different weapons and upgrades and they all had the each like their own little like ultimate ability and you were oh, making your yeah. way through different graveyards and like dude it was so fun we all really enjoyed it i can't believe you're drawing a blank on that i can i vaguely i played that like once that is not true. I you to- once. You totally played it more than that. You were playing it with me. I think, in fact, we beat the game together. I don't think so, Rose. I think I think it was somebody else that you thought that you wished I had. I was there instead of the other some whoever else was playing with you. I'll tell you but what. I don't think it was me. I'm going to describe what this game was like a little bit more. Why don't you look it up and see, like just do a YouTube search, Steve, and just look for Hunter the Reckoning. I know you're going to remember it when you see it. But while he's doing that, I'm glad to see The Ascent made its debut just because I think that, that a game like this has been actually pretty overdue. I know that there have been indie titles here and there that, have the same type of isometric approach, but they haven't grabbed my attention. I really though enjoy what I saw when it came to the, the trailer for the ascent. So, um, I just hope that it it does continue to be more of that, like online four player co-op. It looks like it's definitely kind of like that smash TV. Uh, but I would, I would say it's more so like the hunter, the reckoning. Isn't it kind of like, um, Isn't it kind of like Diablo in a sense? Very loosely. It's, it's not, I mean, Diablo is, is also like an isometric type of game, but you know, the difference is that Diablo tends to be more of a, like a loot hunting game. Like you, you play along, you have like kind of like your diet Coke RPG elements to it. And then you're making your way and you can trade armor and sell stuff and that, that sort of thing. Hunter the reckoning. It's like you play the same character And you can, you know, find certain weapons to use for a limited time. And like I said, this is not hardly the same game. I remember. Okay. So yes, I do remember playing this game, but that, but the ascent that, that is like further distance away. The hunter, the reckoning, you're, you're the camera's pretty much on the level with all the characters. It's not like a bird's eye view. No, I'm looking at it. No, I'm looking at it, Russ. I remember it differently. I remember it was like more of an isometric (laughs) view. (laughs) Well, I'm looking at it right now, Russ. Like, like you're definitely not like, it's not like a third person action game where you're like down on the level because you, because you could see where everybody was at any given point in time. But the camera, like your viewpoint, your viewing (laughs) angle and the ascent is like on the rafters. <laughs> the game the from Hunter the Reckoning, it's like you're uh, maybe like on a rooftop, like a small rooftop looking at the characters. You can see four people on the screen, but you're not looking at the tops of their heads. No, no, no. I'm not saying it was like a, a strictly <laughs> top down. Like isometric uh, means when you're looking at something above, but at an uh, angle. Oh, like it's, yeah, okay. it's at an angle. So there's like perspective and stuff. I'm just saying that the ascent that, that to me, there's a clear difference in perspective from the, the ascent versus Hunter the Recting. That's okay. That's, that, 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 that's, that's fair enough. Steve. That's fair enough. I'm going to have to take a look at it myself, but I will say that that is the game that came to my mind when I saw the trailer. Moving on to the medium. This was a psychological horror type of game. This is the game that had um, the soundtrack from the composer who did the Silent Hills. Ah, 
yes. Polish yes. developer Bloober Team, right. which specializes in this type of genre. They've made several titles. And uh, apparently they have two different soundtracks. Like they have one that they've made at their studio and then there's a second soundtrack. And I'm not exactly sure if both are included with the game or if you have to buy the other one separately. I'm not, they were a little mum on that. Mm, I don't know if you're going to be able to buy them that, Russ. I don't know who's going to listen to that in their uh, car going to work in the morning. You know, I think they, I think, I think the one composer made something and then they had the other composer and then they think they probably merged their efforts. Oh, <laughs> very possible it could in fact steve are you gonna be playing the medium mm, i'll wait and see on that one russ probably gonna wait i know you're gonna spend 60 bucks on all the new games besides madden steve i'm broke <laughs> uh, I, i'd be lucky if i can even afford the system <laughs> yeah. we'll see about that russ Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. I, um, okay, so gotta, um, stand on my <laughs> soapbox. I gotta stand on my box of soap here for, for a moment. I didn't care for the opening of this game. Yeah, it got dumb. Well, it was, it was as if they were trying to go for that shock value. They wanted to be edgy and that sort of thing. But honestly, it was, it wasn't done in a way that I thought was cool or tasteful. Like, like you can, do something that has taste. I'm not saying like it has to be clean or anything like that, but like you can tell like, like when, when you look at art, people who, who, who are capable of creating art, they have a good sense of taste. They have literally <laughs> good taste. Sure. And when I saw this, it was like, this was like, Oh yeah, we got We got to put something in there. that's just going to shock everybody. We want to shock people. How about we do this? We have a nice Christmas tree and we'll put like a, you know, like, like the, the classic American nucleus family, like in these poses of Jubilee and stuff. And then we have this, this, this vampire guy. Okay. And he's running around, he's running amok in the family room and he's like kind of poking fun at him. He's uh, teasing them. He's mocking them. And what we'll do is we'll put like hooks, we'll put hooks all in their eyes and their mouths. And you know, it just, it goes on and on. And you're just like, okay, this, this is just, it's to me, it, like, I think that it, it speaks badly, especially considering a lot of the stuff that's been, that's been going on in real life uh, over the past uh, few years here. And I really just don't want to have some impressionable weak willed, socially awkward person who's going to look at that and get inspired and want to try and do that to their family or do it to some other hapless victims or something. I don't know. Like, like looking at that, I was like, there, there's, I don't know. They're, 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 they could have really gone with a different idea entirely. And I think made more of a lasting impact. what do you think, Steve? Yeah, pretty much the same thing, Russ, but you know, there is a small little following of the vampire games. Um, who they are, where they are, I'm not really sure. I haven't spoken to any of my friends who actually play the game, but they keep making more of them, so I guess they shall somehow, Russ. But what I will comment on is this is yet another game where it didn't look any different from a regular Xbox One title. I mean, it was almost confusing. Like, they didn't that, this one almost went backwards. I mean, this almost looked like a, a good 360 game. Totally. <laughs> I mean, I, like, what are we showcasing here? I have followed this game for a while now and I can tell you the in-game graphics definitely took a hit yeah. for sure. And that's saying something because I'm actually somewhat interested in the game. Like I tend to have interest in certain types of vampire oriented <laughs> games if they're done well, but yeah, I'm, I'm a little concerned about how this game is, is going to be by the time it hits the shelf. Yeah. Especially when you have such a big event and people are excited and you want to show some, you want to show your guns. You know, you want to flex your muscle. About, this is what we're coming out with. This is what we've been confident about. And then they show that and then looks like we're going backwards in time. And uh, this runs on the 360, but by golly, you can be, it can be backwards compatible on the, uh, the series X too. Huh? Huh? Anybody thumbs up? No. All right. Next. <laughs> <laughs> Which leads us to the final game that ended the entire thing on a bit of a whimper. It was Yakuza Like a Dragon. Oh, I, for one, have never played any of the older games in the series. I know that there is a, somewhat of a following for this this type of game. Uh, I know that it's published by Sega. Sega! 
the trailer itself, I, I thought started out interesting, but then like halfway through it lost me. Like it just became super generic. And like, I was just like, what the heck? Like, why are we watching this? This is just becoming more and more boring as, as it goes on. And to the point where I just, I didn't care anymore. So, yeah, I played one Yakuza game. I think that was for the 360. I forgot actually which game I played. I mean, it was kind of like it was a Yakuza version of Grand Theft Auto, but not nearly as in depth. And um, I mean, it's fine for what it is. You're you're a guy and you're kind of part of, well, the Yakuza. Uh, but you do martial arts and you do errands and you do your fair share of violence and stuff. And there's a story to it. I mean, it, it's not terrible. It's not bad. And I'm not going to say that. But um, I mean, the game I played, a while back was definitely more interesting than whatever that was on the stuff that I watched. So, yeah. Indeed. Out of the 13 titles, I think there are four that I personally am looking forward to playing. What about you, Steve? Yeah, I think I'm going to say about three. <laughs> Sounded like a balloon. <laughs> <clears throat> so what grade would you give this particular presentation, Steve? I would probably have to say uh, no more than a C, maybe even a C minus. That's because, what I was going to say, Steve. Yeah. Good lad. Um, yeah. There, see, I, I, the th- I don't go back to Phil Spencer because I don't understand. I, like You have all this buildup and you're supposed to know your community and the last couple E3s or like, you know, the showcase events have been lukewarm at best. And then it's all your spotlight because there's no E3. You ha- you can do it. You can prepare everything behind the scenes and have meetings and say, how do you think the crowd's going to respond to this? Maybe we should do a trial run and see what, you know, what folks are going to think before we do it. And then like everything is at your whim. Like this was totally planned by Microsoft. It wasn't like E3 came about and there was a deadline. Like Microsoft planned this. It was their event. It wasn't like, you know, back to back. Okay. You know, Sony's going to do something this day and we have to do something, you know, the same exact day. You know, it, it I don't know. It, so I, I found a, a tweet by Aaron Greenberg. He said, had we not said anything and just shown, uh, shown May inside Xbox show like we did last month, I suspect reactions might have been different. Clearly, we set some wrong expectations, and that's on us. We appreciate all the feedback, and I can assure you we will take it all in a learn as a team. Um, which Who said that? Aaron, oh, I just closed out my phone. Aaron Greenberg. And, and who is he? Uh, I just closed out my phone again. Uh, he <laughs> oh, hold on. Keep the phone open, Steve. Keep the phone open. Man, okay, I'll look back in a second. But clearly... I mean, I'm glad he's taken, you know, they're, they're taking some ownership of it. But to me as a gamer, I thought, okay, am I, before I even like start digging into all this stuff, I thought, okay, am I the only one feeling this way? Because I'm, ex- I'm as excited. I feel like I'm ex- as excited as everybody else who I know who plays Xbox and looking forward to the next system. And I felt this way. Oh, actually too, look on YouTube. If you look on YouTube and you look at the, the event, Right by Microsoft, there's like more than half of people dislike than like, and then you go to Ubisoft and you look at their quote unquote gameplay that they just put on on their little YouTube site, and it's the same exact thing. So it's like the great majority, you know, fifty one plus percent of of the gaming community went WTF, guys? What are you guys doing? <laughs> you know, and it, and I feel like the head of Xbox should kind of know better. I mean, if he has his finger on everything, he's got to be a part of the planning and the marketing and the communication and the social media. And he's got to kind of play, you know, kind of all angles. And I think, I mean, a C minus is, I mean, not, not even, I mean, that's probably a little bit generous because we've all been salivating waiting for this next gen system, waiting for the next gen games. And yeah, the third party titles, but it's not like third party titles are supposed to suck. You know, they're, I mean, they're third party. There's nothing wrong with them. Third party titles are absolutely fine, but I just feel like, uh, I mean, the C minus is almost generous. I, I, it almost makes me doubt the system 
And I mean, I, I'm still going to get it. That was a little bit too strong. I'm, I'm, I'll admit, I'll admit, a little bit too strong. But if it's taken all this long <laughs> and like two lukewarm E3s to get here, and we're going, okay, show us what you got. And then they show us that. I don't know. To me, it was just a disappointment. Well, um, I think... Oh, said, I'm sorry, Steve. I, continue. I was going to say, you, you mentioned the word underwhelming before, and I think that was, that was that's actually a good word to, to summarize. It's, it was, but I would say very underwhelming. Like, I'm not going to go tell... I'm not... I I don't feel that really excited. I mean, if, if they had... How many games was it? 13 games? How many did they show? 13, Steve. So, 13, and I don't even care about a half of them. All I care about is three of them that I actually want to, to look into. And one of them is just like so-so, which was Call of the Sea. Like, I kind of just, I don't know if I really want to spend 60 bucks on it. I for sure like Chorus, you know, and I, and I so I mean, I for, I for sure want to buy Chorus. That's one game out of 13. <laughs> That's not saying a lot. Mm. Rush. I, I know what you mean, Steve. I, I definitely know that. That's why I, I use the, the term underwhelming because it wasn't as though it was a disappointment necessarily, but it was underwhelming. And I think that was a critical miss for Microsoft because my mind <clears throat> instantly goes to Sony's camp because you know, Sony was looking and they wanted to see what was going to be shown. And a lot of the games that but they probably showed are going to be also available on PS5. So, there is going to be considerable pressure on Microsoft to make sure they deliver the goods next month. If they don't, then it's Sony's to lose because I think going back to what we talked about earlier, on the one hand, it's cool that you have a company that is being proactively transparent about what their next gen platform is going to be about and how they dole it out and that sort of thing. But they run the risk of not being able to really capitalize on the secrecy of their system, because if they keep talking about it and they keep showing stuff and certain things are impressive and other things are not as impressive and stuff, it's like you start to kind of, um, in a way you're oversaturating the market with information, but, but you're also starting to desensitize your fan base and Sony, on the other hand, uh, has been very tight-lipped. Like, they, they, they revealed their controller, and that actually made quite a splash. You had a bunch of uh, folks in, the, in the, the, the community talking about it, and, I, and it, it helps to spur on conversations about what the system might look like based on what the controller looks like, and we haven't seen any uh, games yet for the system. So I'm not saying that, that Sony is going to be the out-and-out -out winner of the reveal contest here, but I do think that there are some problems going on in the sense that like, to, like to your point, you know, Phil Spencer, I think has his, I think, I think it's very good that, that he's at the helm of this whole thing, but I'm surprised at the lack of third party partnerships that really are, are just not here. You know, when it comes to third party, for instance, we didn't see anything from Konami. We didn't see anything from Capcom. We didn't see um, anything from Rockstar or 2K. And it does make me wonder if, if perhaps some of these, these other developers will have something to show come July. That might be what the July show is all about. Because it was interesting to look at how the, the majority of publishers and developers that were shown here, I really, I either knew very little about or I didn't know anything about. And so I think it's, again, I don't know if it's that tone deafness, once again, rearing its ugly head within the Microsoft camp. Because, you know, we've talked about that several times over the last several console generations regarding Microsoft, where you're just not sure how they're not really making a, a, a big effort to be able to, to grab some of this. I know that Phil Spencer has actually gone out and done some aggressive acquiring of various studios. I think they have something like 15 developers now on, as first party, which is very good. And so that's one of the things I am looking forward to next month is like, I'm going to be expecting there to be between 10 to 15 first party titles that we can look at. And they better for the most part be really, really good. Better take a step up, that's for sure. I mean, <clears throat> if they want people to run out to buy the, the system, they got to have the games to back it up. And they, they really need to put their money where their mouth is. I mean, they've been touting this about uh, you know, how it's going to be the most powerful system, but 
that's all talk until the rubber meets the proverbial road. You know what I mean? I mean, you could talk about how much horsepower you have and whatever in your car. And then you go, okay, let's race. And then the thing goes, putt, putt, putt. And then, you know, it, you're, everyone's going to be talking about what happened to all the, the goodies that you had planned. You know, it's just, um, what's going on. Confusing. Right. Well, do you have any other concluding thoughts? I wait with bated breath for July. For July or for June? I think it's actually July, Russ. No, no. It's June, Steve. There's going to be a showing of first party for, uh, yeah, first party games in June. And there's going to be another showing in July of something else. Yeah, okay. Well, I wait for bated breath. <laughs> you wait <laughs> for bated breath or do you wait with? With. Breath? Oh, bated oh. Breath. maybe you wait with your bated breath for my bated breath. Oh, jeez. <laughs> That wraps up this episode of Joy Guys, and make sure you tune in next week. Thanks for hanging out with us. If you enjoyed this episode, we invite you to check out patreon.com slash joygasm, which is spelled J-O-Y-G-A-S-M. Come on, go check it out, and you'll become a monthly contributor. You'll get exclusive perks and early access to the show, not to mention it really helps us continue doing what we love to do. Also, you can follow us on social media and YouTube. Just do a search for Joygasm TV. Last but not least... Search Joygasm TV on Twitch because you might just see us stream our gaming adventures live. And until then, we'll see you next week. <laughs>